Hello and welcome to episode 37 of the Talk Witchcraft podcast. In this episode, Erica and I will be talking about how to make the most of Libra season. You're listening to Talk Witchcraft. On this podcast, we talk about witchcraft as a lifestyle and discover how to merge magic into your daily life. Every week, we'll demystify witchy topics like tarot, astrology, crystals, herbs, and more as you develop your personal brand of magic and create the life of your dreams. We're We're your your hosts, hosts, the Mystic Mystic Sisters, Sisters, Erica and Maggie. In this segment of the show, we choose the tarot card for the week, and we look for moments that relate to this card in our daily lives. For this episode, we chose the Queen of Swords. The theme of this card is precision. This queen is self-contained, intellectual, and sharp-witted. She is a smart woman who doesn't take anyone's shit. She is going to tell you exactly what you need to do and exactly the way to do it, and her way is the right way. Any other way is going to be less efficient, less precise, less accurate, and generally less good. So do you have a story that reminded you of the Queen of Swords, Erica, or a person, really? I do. Um, I have a friend and colleague that I have known for a very long time, and she is the, the Queen of Swords. Like, I'm just, she's smart. She's very sharp-witted. She definitely has the my way or the highway attitude she thinks that everything she does is the the right way and that anybody not doing it that way is needs to do better and she can be very prickly about it and she is um usually right she is usually the one that's correct and it usually is her way or the highway like it there's there's a reason why she feels this way And she's my person that I go to whenever I have a question or whenever I'm like, something feels wrong. Uh, I need, I need, she's like my ethics mentor. Like she knows what's right and she knows how to go about getting it no matter who she hurts or ruffles feathers along the way. So my Gemini card is the Knight of Swords. And I feel like I'm always trying to get to the queen of swords like that's my next level of progression where I'm a little bit chaotic right now as a knight um but I'm striving to be the person who is always right and I still think that I'm always right but I don't have the like experience and um know how to actually be right all the time so I have that like idea that yes this is the right way to do it but I have nothing to back it up so I'm like the knight charging into things and being really stubborn and adamant that yes this is the way it should be done and I know it is um but without like what the queen has which is that experience like I said is like somebody who actually has things to back her up and so for me I really think of this card as like since it's a sword it's like a political card in some ways like that's what the swords kind of represent and rule over is politics so I think of this as like all of the women who are leaders in politics. So often it's like Hillary Clinton and Elizabeth Warren and um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and like Stacey Abrams, like all of these really powerful women who have done amazing things and also have like the experience to know that what they're saying is actually going to help people and it's actually going to do good in their community. Um, so that's who the queen is. And so I'm always over here thinking that I know what's right. And, um, but, uh, you know, it's not quite there yet. So for our main topic this week, we are talking about how to make the most of Libra season. And we'll give you five ways to make the most of that. And just as a reminder, in case you haven't listened to the podcast before, For each zodiac season, we just give you this overview of what's coming up for the season at the beginning. And the way that these seasons are determined is based on the position of the sun in relationship to the earth and the equinoxes and the solstices. Um, So basically, the sky around the earth has been divided into four equal quadrants. And those quadrants are determined by the equinoxes and the solstices. And then each of those quadrants is divided further into three more sections. 
And so that equals 12 total sections of sky in each of those sections is one of the zodiac signs. So we have Libra season is when the sun is traveling through that section of the sky, or really when that section is traveling through the sun, but (laughs) 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 either way, (laughs) that's how we determine those, the season that we're talking about. And as we enter Libra season, we wanted to give you some ideas for what you can do throughout this time period to really gather that that energy of Libra season and make the most of it in your life. So what's the first way to make the most of Libra season, Erica? To learn to listen to better understand. It is important to remember that listening is different from hearing. When you hear someone, it's more about take, about what you can get from out of this interaction. It's about what, you know, what can be my next jab? What's my next um, retort and rebuttal? But when you're listen, you're focusing on the give and what you can give the person to support them and whatever is going on in their life. So when your friend, partner, coworker, or someone else is sharing their joys and sorrows with you, spend more time wondering about how you can give and give more and take less. So this is one of the easiest ways to strengthen your relationships. Right. Because Libra is associated with the seventh house in astrology, and that house is about partnerships. And so doing this, learning to listen better is one way where you can develop those partnerships. Like Erica said, you know, um, and these partnerships can be romantic partnerships, but also friendship partnerships or like business relationships as well. And it's hard for me. And it's, it's an ADHD brain thing um, that when I'm listening to someone, I want to share something that is about me that relates to what they're saying. And sometimes to people who don't understand that piece of the brain can view it as that person wasn't listening to me at all. All they wanted to do was talk about themselves. But in my brain, it's a, I was listening to you and I can relate to it. And this is how, so it's, it's really important to recognize that and judge your audience about what they need and what kind of listening they need. Yeah, I do that too. And I think, um, I think we need to normalize, like not jumping to that conclusion of that person just wanted to talk about themselves. And at the same time, people who do use this tactic to relate to another person, um, something that I've learned to do at least is to preface sharing how I relate to that situation by saying, I understand what you're going through. Here's a time where I feel like I also went through it and here's how I got through it so that it's like, I'm listening to you and I can relate and I want to help you get, get through that too. Yeah. Add some of that empathy in, you know, it's the, it's crawling into the hole and sitting there with them. And I think that sometimes that piece is missed and not understood. Yeah. So listening is also about just better communication in general. So the second way to make the most of Libra season is to strengthen partnerships and or build new ones. I like what we said, Libra energy is about partnerships. So it's all about those things that I mentioned before, romantic partnerships, platonic partnerships, business partnerships. And so that means that Libra season is a really good time to go over issues you might have with your partner. So in addition to being a better listener and more empathetic, taking a chance to see what issues have come up in the past that maybe you haven't figured out or you've kind of, you know, stuffed down (laughs) and really opening yourself up to working through any suppressed emotions and things like that. And also to forming those new relationships. So if you, if you're not currently in a relationship, look, opening yourself up to forming a new partnership, maybe deciding to get married or, you know, creating a new business or something like that. Libra is about balancing and creating a rhythm within life. And so being able to add more weights to your scales to take the metaphor way too far. As you add more 
to a relationship, it becomes more complicated, but it also makes it fuller and richer and more meaningful. So look at what your relationships, what your partnerships are missing and try to stack that side a little heavier. Mm, Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Before we go on to our next idea for celebrating the Libra season, we're going to talk about our herb of the week. So this episode is brought to you by Passion Flower. I will start by telling you about the medicinal properties, and then Maggie will share the magical ones. Passion flower is great for a variety of things. Generally, we are using the leaf, vine, and flower. You can use those parts in a standard infusion for tea. You can make a tincture from it, or you can make a fluid extract which is really fun to use because then you can use it just like vanilla extract or lemon extract in your cooking. Passion flower first and foremost is the ADHD herb. It aids in com- concentration. It ha- helps to calm the spirit and relax the nerves. It is really good at helping with anxiety and depression and any sort of irritability. It's also good for the blood. So it aids in um, lowering blood pressure in uh, menstrual cramps and hemorrhoids. It's really good for PMS as well. It's also good for reducing swelling. So it helps with bronchitis, with colic, with any kind of cough or thing like that. So as for the magical uses of passion flower, it is associated with the passive energy, Venus, water element, and Libra. And you can use it in any spell or ritual surrounding calming, grounding, prosperity, and attracting friendships and romance. So you could carry it with you if you are trying to build your popularity and attract new friends to yourself. Or um, one other use is to bathe in an, in an infusion of passion flower. And if you do this for five days in a row, you could attract a sexual partner to yourself. If you sleep with it under your pillow, that's thought to, pr- to promote more sleep. And so that's that calming aspect. You can make it into a wash. And that is one way that you can diminish any sort of disagreements that are happening in your household and to diminish your your stress. So I've used this as a wash for my desk space. And I didn't realize it was associated with ADHD. So that's really awesome because it did. I feel like it helped me focus as well. So I diminished the stress and also helped me to focus in my workspace. If you grow passion flower at your home, or if you, you can either grow it inside or outside, and it, it, it is thought to calm any sort of problems that you might have, troubles and arguments, and generally promote peace in the household. Drinking passion flower tea can help you to be more aware of your aura. And I think that's probably partly the like being more grounded and being more calm. It helps you to be more mindful of your energy field. It also allows you to be more free of anger. A lot of this like sexual energy, love energy, and friendship energy, it's all due to that association with Venus. Thanks for that, Maggers. Yeah, call me Maggers (laughs) on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) So let's get back to our other three ways of making the most of Libra season. The third way is to resolve conflicts and find compromise. So as you can see, a lot of these are very focused on different sorts of partnerships that you might have. As I mentioned before, bringing up those hardships that might be happening in your relationships, any sort of unhappiness that you've been feeling and figuring out a way to present those to the people that you are in partnership with. And that will give you an opportunity to grow. And you can also negotiate a change if necessary, because like Erica said, it's about finding that balance and that equality and equity, making an agreement where everyone can be happy if there's any sort of unhappiness. And I do want to point out that Libra is not about being a pushover. It's not about letting people walk all over you in for the sake of balance. Sometimes 
to balance a situation or to find an agreement means that one side is outweighing the other. And that's okay. That's part of it. That's what the scales are about. You know, I, I have this test that I do with my kiddos that's looking at social language. One of it is negotiating with peers. So the questions go like, you want to, you and your friend are riding bikes together. Your friend wants to go to the park, but you want to go to the playground at the school. What do you do? How do you solve the problem? And nine times out of the 10, the kid will say, well, I'll just go to the park with my friend. And they just give in. And it's like, yes, that's one way to work it out. But sometimes you're allowed to put your foot down and be like, no, we went to the park last week. Let's go to, I really want to go to the school playground today. And it's okay to do that. Yeah. I think Libra does get sort of thought of as like diplomatic or a pushover because of that need for like harmony. And it's the easiest way to find harmony is to just give in to what other people want. So I do think it's important to remember that sacrificing your own happiness may not cause waves, but it'll make it so that you're living in an unhappy situation. Um, So like you said, it's okay to make waves sometimes in order to come to like an actual equilibrium and calm harmony. So what's the fourth way to make the most of Libra season, Erica? It's to surround yourself with beauty. And beauty is often defined by symmetry and balance, which means Libra is all about it and embraces it. So invite in some Venus energy by making your space beautiful and inviting and surround yourself with things that you love and you find delightful. And how we feel on the inside is often influenced by our external surroundings and vice versa. So you surround yourself with art, music, and creativity, and you'll soon be filled with sunshine. Yeah, when I think of Libra, I always think of our Anna, our grandma, because she's a Libra. And she just loved all of her. She had so many different things that she'd collected, different art forms and statues and all sorts of things. And she loved to put them on display everywhere. So there was, you know, just everywhere there was art. (laughs) And she loved to talk about it, too, and to share the stories of the artists who created it with anyone who would listen. So um, I always think about that, that when she wasn't like having a party or when she wasn't having family over, she was sitting in this room filled with all of these things that she loved. So, So I think that is a great way to experience Libra season is to make your space just like completely you and filled with the things that you like to be around. Yeah, she was totally a Libra. (laughs) Yeah, with all of these things. (laughs) Such a Libra. The most Libra. So and then the final thing for we thought of for making the most of Libra season is to reconnect with who you are at like a very basic level. As I said before, Libra is very partner focused. And so it's really easy to get lost in someone else's identity when you are so focused on being part of a partnership. Instead of being me, you become we. So to balance that out with that Libra energy, to create balance of being so focused on partnership, don't forget about yourself. Don't forget about what makes you unique, and who you are and all of that. So finding ways to remain independent, finding ways to not rely completely on someone else in order to meet your needs, your happiness, your basic human needs, and all of that, so that you are still an individual, even as part of a partnership. Yeah. I, when Maggie and Dana got married, part of my matron of honor speech was to to talk about this, that even, you know, even though they're coming together to create a new unit of a family, what makes them such a great unit is their individuality and their individual ideas and thoughts and hobbies and interests, and that they can come together to make something even better while still being themselves. So that interdependence on people is important. Don't let it become dependence. Right. Yeah. Cause at the beginning of Dana and my relationship, it's, it's interesting that you brought it up because by the time we were, you know, getting married, we'd obviously 
been through dating for a long time. And at the very beginning of our relationship, we were definitely very codependent. And so we had been very intentional about creating these separate spaces and separate interests and individual um, personas and how they fit into the unit. So during Virgo season, we were talking about service magic. And after that episode, Maggie and I realized that we came on a little heavily on our former president, number 45. And we were wondering if that was a bad idea, if we should have been a little bit more moderate. And we both decided that it's important to hold strong to our convictions And that that's something that we value greatly. And I've never been secretive about my, you know, political beliefs or anything like that. So if people don't know those things about me by now, then they've been uh, hiding under a rock. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So because of that, because Libra is very much about social justice and balancing and equality and all of those things, We wanted to highlight things that we feel strongly about and help to engage others in service magic in other ways throughout the entire Libra season. So with all of that in mind, we thought for Libra season, since Libra is about justice, as Erica mentioned, we would recommend a variety of different service actions that you can take, including funds that you can donate to, magical actions you can take, and specific political action that you can take. So for this uh, first week of Libra season, we wanted to address what was happening in Texas currently. Um, A couple weekends ago, I went to the um, Capitol in Denver to protest the recent anti-abortion laws, and we wanted to show our support to the women and other people with uteruses who are living in Texas. And um, so we did some research and we found a nonprofit called the Lilith Fund. We um, liked the name first and foremost because Lilith is the goddess of rebellion. And so we kind of did some research about their company and um, their mission is to provide financial assistance and emotional support while building community spaces for people who need abortions in Texas unapologetically and with compassion and conviction. And their values are about compassion, intersectionality, anti-racism, client-centered, inclusivity, and collaboration. So there'll be a link in the show notes about how to donate to that organization if you feel that that is the best way that you can support Texans specifically. We've also included in the show notes a ritual of sorts for reproductive rights that you can do for yourself or for anybody that you would like to send that to. Um, So make sure you go to mumblesandthings.com slash blog slash zero three seven for the that information. So the other important thing to do is to call your representatives um, in your own states to make sure that things like this don't spread and don't um, continue being passed uh, as we move forward with this horrible thing that has happened in Texas. Yeah, because this is beyond... Um, how you feel about abortion. This is very much a way to control bodies and a limit of freedoms. And that's a slippery slope. So we want to make sure that this type of legislation doesn't get passed in other states. So as Erica said, make sure you let your representatives know that you are not in support. Yeah. And it's an actual, it's a, it's a figurative witch hunt. Um, There is Part of the legislation is that it's okay to call on your neighbors and call on your doctors. And I mean, I was even hearing that like janitors who work in clinics can be arrested. This is, this is what happened in Salem. This is what happened in Europe during the witch trials. This is going backwards in history and it's not acceptable and it's not okay. And then for our last segment, 
We spent some time learning about the moon and all of her different phases and how to use that to manifest and let go of things. And so for this season between Mabin and Yule, we wanted to celebrate some of the goddesses from around the world. So for each goddess, we will give you a theme to think about that is something that she represents for you to create a ritual or spell or manifestation, any way that you can bring that theme into your life. And I am choosing goddesses from my legendary ladies goddess deck that was created by Anshin. So this week we chose Anya, who is the Irish goddess of fertility and love. And her theme is inner strength. Anya is guiding you to look within for strength, whether you are embracing a new path, taking a risk, or healing from past pain. Everything you are seeking is inside of you. So Maggie, how will you invite inner strength into yourself this week? Whenever I start to feel sort of powerless, I like to buy myself a bouquet of flowers. And then when I see them, it it like lights me up for some reason. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it it makes me feel like anything is possible just because there's a beautiful bouquet of flowers in my kitchen on a, in a vase or or on my dining room table wherever I put it. And so that's that's what I will pr- I'll do to invite more strength is to go out and get some something beautiful and remind myself that there's something beautiful in me too. And that those flowers can like reflect that. And I can see it, you know, visually externally that I can be just as strong and beautiful as those flowers. Very nice. What are you going to do, Erica? The 14th of this month was the anniversary of my divorce. And so I am absolutely on a new path and I am healing from past pain. And one of those things that I am learning to do is to express my feelings as they come up and to not be afraid about how those feelings might impact or affect other people because they're my feelings and I am allowed to feel them. And so as I go forward this week, I will invite that strength to come in through being able to express my feelings and know that I am in a safe space and that by expressing those feelings, I am healing. That's beautiful. I'm excited about this new segment. I hope our listeners enjoy it. We also want to hear from you. So if you go to witchwanderer.com, you'll find a question that you can answer. And when you answer this question, you will earn five mumble coins. So tell us how you are going to invite inner strength into your life this week. Maybe you'll get ideas from other responses, or maybe you'll inspire someone else. So make sure you share. And throughout the next week, our card for the week is the Two of Swords. And so we'll be looking for times when the Two of Swords shows up in our life. This card is about denial and blocked feelings and repressed emotions. It's also about being blind to what's true, um, not being willing to see the truth. It's about pretending that you're doing one thing and actually feeling another thing, being sort of unavailable to the people around you, acting like you're okay when maybe you're not okay, denying your feelings. It's sort of being defensive and blocking people out, putting up barriers, protecting yourself and avoiding things that you need to deal with. So we'll be looking for times in our life that we have experienced those things. And if you would like to share your experience with the Two of Swords, please send us a voicemail at we listen at talkwitchcraft.com and we'll play it on the next episode. You can find out more about this episode by going to mumblesandthings.com slash blog slash 037. Join us next week when we talk about beautifying your altar. Make sure you subscribe so that you are notified about each new episode. And to help other witches find this show, please leave us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also find us on Instagram at Mumbles and Things and join us in the Mumbles Academy to chat about this episode with other witchy folk. Bye-bye. Goodbye.